Karibu sana. Welcome back to Daybreak. And uh, come, I leave you Ada. Uh, today is engaged. I don't know why Anita is laughing. Karibu ni sema laughing. Wee. Kama ni kushindo ina niaribu wataluga. Um, all right. Well, today is engaged. And as always, we like to talk about issues that affect you. And uh, one of the things we've been seeing over the, let's say, past two weeks, is a lot of uh, issues that come about you hear somebody has killed his uh, spouse, girlfriend, killed the family. And so uh, depression has also been on the rise. So we want to talk about red flags in relationships and skew it a little bit towards uh, how you would know if, for lack of a better word, you're dating a sociopath. Or and it's a bit of a strong word, but we'll kind of break it down so that you know that uh, the red flags that you can actually see to then, therefore, then you can insulate yourself or others or seek help early. I don't think uh, CJ would advocate for insulating yourself because he's the key on communication. But <laughs> <laughs> Anita Ray uh, is here with us uh, this morning. Karibu sana. Asante sana, And so is CJ Atemo. Thank you. How Welcome. are you doing, man? I'm very well. It's been a while. Yeah, it's Since, been a while. Uh, tunasamanga kwa county in French, wabed kanyakla. Hani tukai hivi pamoja. It's been a minute. But we shukuru sana. So that, to remind you guys of that question, um, do we have it? Yes, it is. What are the red flags in a relationship? So I ask you to SMS 22422. The hashtag is daybreak. You can also call in and give us your thoughts, your comments, your views, your suggestions on 0719-777777 and 0742-961-343. Um, I'll begin by saying I read something very interesting just as a way of starting the conversation off uh, when I was doing some research. Yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> contrary to popular belief. <laughs> <laughs> and there was uh, somebody said that the, the part of the brain that communicates pain is the same whether it is physical or emotional. So meaning your brain and heart don't know the difference. Nikiku kanyago skio chungu. Nikiku heartbreak. Nikiku heartbreak. Quite it's true. the same area that communicates that pain towards the to to you rather. So you start feeling as some type of way. But I guess let's begin with that. There are some certain red flags in relationships. But before that, let's talk about the overall thing that most people have been talking about. Is it true that when people begin to see, for example, on TV, uh, stories of what to call, like killing your spouse, you to see, then we start hearing more of those stories. Is it? a copycat syndrome what do you feel what do you feel should we now stop telling the story or what do we do i'm gonna ask you uh i'm gonna take back that question to you all right why do people dress like celebrities because they saw another celebrity thank you why do people <laughs> dance like jamaicans because they saw the jamaicans do the dance thank aren't you why does someone want to look like cj <laughs> cj is looking sharp so mm -hmm. if we keep showcasing these things then someone thinks i can be that person we have a lot of mental instability, let's be honest about that. People just ha need small triggers. And a small trigger could be people going on social media with these stories and justifying the acts. Ah, yes, yes. You've seen and victimizing that. the victims. Yeah. So the person thinks, if you can justify why he did it, so even I do it and I have a good reason for doing it, then they will justify it for me. You get? And you find at the end of the day, most of these people have nothing to lose. Because the person who's done with life who's tired they have nothing to lose and that's what people don't get someone who's depressed and done with life mm -hmm. even their kids even their families even their jobs is not a reason to live mm -hmm. so they have nothing to lose really so if i see this being done and be justified why not be the next one you know mm -hmm. why not be the next willis why not be the next cj <coughs> i would want to be the next person you know so i think um i'm not saying we stop talking about it we should talk about it but on a different angle mm. how can we avoid it let's not talk about who did uh, what or who did not do. how can we avoid this for the sake of our kids for the sake of the younger generation which is watching let's not talk about the negative in this let's look at how can we avoid it in the future mm -hmm. yeah yeah so cj like also for in terms of just mentally uh does like you see it on monday you see it on tuesday you see it on wednesday and here you are in a situation where wait a minute this thing that this person was killed for or was hurt for is the same thing that's going on here. Going on. I'm probably watching the story with the person who is causing me the pain. Does it plant that seed? It is. And uh, one of the things about uh, sustained images is that they normalize something. Mm. If, if you want to push an agenda, you just make people keep seeing it. 
And uh, the first time there'll be a reaction. I'm, I'm, if I'm watching something that is violent, the first time I'm not used to it, there'll yeah. be a reaction. I don't like watching people being killed or doing that. The more I keep watching, the less it bothers me. It becomes normal. So images have a way of uh, reshaping um, the normal. Mm -hmm. So when we keep on seeing certain things, we stop feeling a certain way about them. Uh, we stop feeling that this is wrong. We start feeling like, but that is very okay. That's, that's normal. It doesn't bother anybody. Now, in a case where for I'm watching uh, things about how people are relating with mm -hmm. either their spouses, their girlfriends, or whoever it is, um, if I have a similar case, for example, in my house, the seed is planted. Mm -hmm. It is planted. It's planted because I'm seeing, so this is a possible way of acting. This is a possible way of sorting out this. Especially when you bring out that issue now to the public domain and everybody's bringing out their thoughts and mm -hmm. the people who will support and others will not support. So th there is an affirmation to certain decisions that yeah. are being made whether they are right or wrong. And you see what that does is it stirs up emotions. Most yeah. of those cases, whenever people begin to talk about them, um, you find they're very emotive yeah. because of what probably I've experienced or what Anita has experienced or what you've experienced. Everybody's bringing out the emotions and emotions keep on triggering further emotions. Yeah. And when emotions are triggered, there will be actions that will follow. Right. Um, emotions and logic sit in nearly the sa in, in the same place. Um, to the Greeks, emotions and logic sit in the soul. So it's more like the two pedals, the accelerator and the brake. When your emotions are high and your logic is low, mm -hmm. you're going to do something that you probably will regret when you come back into your senses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then, so we show it probably in moderation, like Anita is saying, always have sort of a backstory towards it. Yeah. And by the way, just for the record, uh, it is, that is not the answer. So if you're looking for an excuse, <laughs> it is not the answer. It's not um, so if, so then let's not talk about what we talk about some of the red flags in relationships and uh, talk about because there are two uh, stages to this. Yeah. There is pre-relationship, in uh, relationship and post. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> what are some of the red flags, like before you actually get into the relationship, that you're supposed to be looking for? <laughs> um. I, I think uh, before you're dating, uh, this one, I think today on me and CJ are going to be on the same road like this. <laughs> 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 it is amazing. Yes. Uh, but uh, there, you see the problem with us. Uh, sometimes I always say this, we're too desperate to fall in love and mm. you want this love you see in the movies, so you don't look for the red flags, but they're always there. And I always say before someone abuses you physically, they abuse you mentally. They break you enough to know I've broken you enough to stay even when I break you physically now. I didn't know I could damage mentally enough that even when I damage you physically, you mm. won't live. Mm. You think you're dependent on me. Mm. I think for me, the first biggest red flag is a jealous, over, not jealous, an over jealous man. Mm. A jealous person is normal, but there's over jealous. Mm -hmm. Who are you talking to on phone? There are these people who have a very bad habit of where are you? Uh, I'm having lunch with Willis. Can you take a picture? Can I video call? Uh, no, I'm a, when is yeah. lunch going to end? Uh, how fast do you think you're going to eat? Or how long are you going to stay? Where is the lunch? Those can... You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite, uh, you should be cautious. Because yes. there's no more jealousy, like, who's that guy? I saw you guys holding hands. That's okay. If your partner is not jealous, that's a problem. But no, this is the extreme. Where, when are you meeting? What time? What time does it end? Can I drop you? Can I pick you? You have to notice it before. Because it's not normal, you know, Willis. It's not normal that someone would want you to take a picture of where you are all the time. You're a grown-up. You should have the freedom of, I want to have lunch with my friends. I wanna, but if someone is over jealous, that's a red flag from zero. Because why are they being too much? That's too much into my space. As CJ always says, everybody deserves their space. Every single person, even married people. So if I'm having lunch with my mother, then you keep calling. Apana si mama yako mbona hampigi picha. I'd be like, it's my mother. So for me, I always say over jealousness, that's, that's a problem. That's one. Yeah. You, yeah. And you know, you know um, the one who even tells you, that you should take pictures and all that that's not even as dangerous as the one that you will always see facial expressions they say nothing but then the, you you with willis you give willis a hug you see there's a facial expression of change he's saying nothing but you can see that this guy is very possessive then they would try to act out like they're normal they're not saying it the problem is that those emotions are being bottled up 
when they blow up, <laughs> they really blow up real big. It's even easier to handle that guy who keeps on saying, take a photo, whatever, because you already know you're dealing with a crazy person. <laughs> yeah. You, know? yeah. you can see it like <laughs> this. It's, it's outright. You even sent a photo before. <laughs> yeah. and, and you know, uh, we're talking about pre. If this person, you're not even dating, and then they already want to cut off everybody. Um, they already want exclusivity. That's a problem. If they're not in, and they don't want anybody around, it's going to be crazy <laughs> when, when they're, they're the ones. <laughs> when they're actually in there. Mm, yeah. yeah. So, so, like you said, <clears throat> so what, are, what I'm looking for, red flags, am I just looking at like those outward expressions, like, you know, ah, Uskai na Anita, or or Siongei, and maybe I'm not a reader of facial expressions. <laughs> maybe that's just how. <laughs> but, but I think, I think, and I think this is one thing I, I love learning from CJ every day. We don't observe in relationships. Yeah. We don't. CJ, we don't. You just fall. <gasps> yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. He's tall. He's handsome. He has money. God, he has everything. You don't observe. Willis, where would someone you walk into the my... wallet. <laughs> <laughs> the wallet? At least in that's not who said that today. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> you meet someone. Willis, where would I meet someone today? Uh, maybe I'm 30 something years old. And that person tells me I can't hang out with CJ, who's been my friend for 20 years, grown up with him. And can't, where would I allow someone like that, you know? And in the mind, that's what happens with most ladies. You don't, he isolates you and you don't want to see it. Your friend is not good enough. I don't like your sisters. They give you bad advice. You know, marriage is mm. for two people. You don't need everybody. He makes you solely dependent on him. If you need advice, he becomes your advisor. Yeah. If you yeah. need a shoulder to lean on, he becomes your shoulder. And it's both ways. You can even find there are women who are solid men. Like anything you need, I'm going to be your mother. I'm going to be your girlfriend. I'm going to be your sister. I'm going to be your lawyer. I'm going to be even your doctor, you know. And that person isolates you so much. When you have a problem, you can't go to anyone else. Those are people who are bottling up issues, you know. I'm a quesolate, I'm a mess up relationships with your family, with your own friends. You know those type of women who tell you, I don't like your boys. They're ruining yeah. your marriage. They're not yeah. married. You say, well, their marriage is not working. You get, I'm a quesolate. <laughs> You're alone now. So when everything comes down, you have to go to her. And it's a bad situation. And that's the problem. Those are red flags. I can't meet someone for two months and tell me, I don't like Willis. Yeah. Who told you I want you to like him? He's my friend, not yours, you know, lens. <laughs> People have to understand that kind of space. Yeah. And that's a really big red flag, you know. Mm -hmm. And as he said, the possessiveness. There's a thin line, I think, CJ, between possessiveness and love and being obsessive. Yeah, but there is. And, and you know, uh, there are those guys who also make these snide remarks. You know, you're talking about somebody talking about, mm. I don't like so and so, I don't like so. There are those who, again, it's not very very, direct. It's, it's not very direct. Mm. Yeah, so it's just a snide remark, and but it leaves you thinking, you know. So he doesn't like Anita, he doesn't like Willis, so he doesn't like what I do, so he's not liked where I go um, all this while, and he's never talked about it. Then he makes a remark like that, um, and then it's done. You you must be very careful about people who are afraid to express their thoughts. Mm -hmm. You must be very careful about people who, especially those who have a problem with difficult conversations. You can see he has a problem or she has a problem with something, but they don't want to express it because for some reason they're really trying to impress you. It's a very dangerous place mm. to be because most abusers and most of these guys, they usually feel they're doing this for the sake of the person that ends up being the victim. They feel like I'm protecting them. It is for their own good. I'm cutting you off from everybody for your own good. I'm your protector. You know, I'm shielding you. I'm shielding you from bad advice. I'm shielding you from everybody who's trying to influence you badly, all these guys that you've ever known. So they always think that they are actually, uh, you know, very benevolent. You must be careful about somebody who is afraid um, to come out. Yet you can see they have a problem, but they are afraid to express it. Mm -hmm. So they show it either in moods, they go away, you know, they don't talk to you for a while. Uh, you ask them, is there a problem? No. They say no. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's <fine>. Nothing. <laughs> it's okay, we don't have a problem. Especially if you yeah. delete it. Yeah. And also, yeah. uh, I think uh, nothing is another red flag <laughs> is emotional blackmail. Right. There's nothing as dangerous as a person who tells you if they ask for something and they have to use the line, so you don't love, so you me. Don't love me. Oh, that's scary. I, see, that's my biggest fear. Every time when I hear a line like that from my friends, I'm like, I don't know what you are. I'm just, I'm going to keep it in. That's an emotional blackmailer. You should never force someone to, you, you're manipulating someone to do this. Yeah. Hi, Anita, I really need uh, this kind of money. I want to do this. I don't have, so you don't love me. You're like, huh? 
Where is that coming from? Hi, Anita, I wanted you, uh, you tell someone, maybe I'm working. Like, no, so you can't miss work for me. Am I not that important to you? Like, what do you mean? It's my job. You, you can't sacrifice. Uh, you know, this these things. And they always make it about themselves, but using you. Because they're going to make you feel so bad for not doing something for them. They'll be like, it's okay. You don't have to do it. I don't want to feel like I'm forcing you. Like, <gasps> and you're going to feel bad genuinely. Like, should I do it? If you have someone in your life, whether posts, dating or even after dating maybe it's your ex who always tells you so you don't want to buy me this like you want me to die right uh, uh, <coughs> run, run. that's this a dangerous quite different from the ones our parents used to use so <laughs> mimi me ni kufe tuka inyo but it's also kind of still emotional blackmail well you know well you it. <laughs> and there's the other side where you've also got to look at how this person treats other people mm. yeah not still just in you observing huh? yeah yeah you <laughs> look at how they treat other people because if if you're treating me well of course there's interest you know um you you've got vested interest but then everybody else i can see you blow up i can see those the anger i can see the tantrums i can see how you cast out i can see how you do all this stuff when i show up then you try to control yourself that's a dangerous place mm -hmm. because when this person has what they want the real them will come out so sometimes you also have got to watch out how do they treat other people, especially people that they don't think they need. Yeah. Because eventually you're getting there. You're getting there with them. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to take a short break, but when we come back, we'll talk about a few things. One, that you will, the tail in there when you mentioned it in terms of people who are one way when they're with... Uh, you, with, then they're with, yeah, yeah, with your spouse. But then, like, if I meet... Let's say CJ here, we're like talking. When I meet CJ and the wife, and this is an example, when I meet <laughs> CJ and the wife, he's a totally different person. He's not yeah. as bubbly and as open. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about that if that is also a red flag. Mm -hmm. And then also we'll talk about, you know, what's been happening in terms of abuse, what are the things you can pick out. And you're still free to uh, use the hashtag Daybreak to send us your views and your comments and your suggestions as well as to use 22422, that's our SMS line. So tweet, text Aid to engage, to engage. I'll have to do with sample some of them. Your design was chosen by Lee. Chosen to have a place in a corner. Wagwan will be back.